dowsing. When the rods cross over, it's literally X marks the spot and it's often within a few inches. What is it? How does it work? There is a myth that we never did, um, but not because it broke the laws of physics. Uh, and that's dowsing which does break the laws of physics. And to be clear, dowsing is the practice of holding on to two ends of a forked stick and using the single piece out there to find water. This is a long and storied tradition, and people have been using this method to find water for hundreds, if not thousands of years. I don't know exactly how long. But its uses go beyond finding water. However, dowsing has never survived empirical testing. Never. It's never, it's never survived. And there's been some pretty clever methodologies. Like putting someone in an empty building where every floor is completely empty and putting a giant volume of water on one floor and taking a dowser and putting them on the floor above that and they couldn't figure out where the water was. And they knew there was like 100,000 gallons of water somewhere on this floor. It is kind of the black art of treasure hunting. I recently posted a video about a metal detector that has a dowsing component to it. And in that same video was a segment about dowsing and the use of dowsing rods. Well, the comments section of that video absolutely blew up. There was about 50 comments on dowsing. Some people called it nonsense. Some people swore that it worked. But this video is not really about dowsing for water. It's dowsing for treasure. And I'm going to show you somebody that we all know. Today, I'm going to have a little talk about something a bit different, but it can be used to help you find buried treasure, shall we say. It's Gary from XP Skill School. Okay, a lot of people are not going to believe in this, but I am a believer, and you need confidence in it too. We're talking about dowsing. Now, dowsing's always been used to find water, underground pipes and things like that. And if you practice at it, you can become good at it. I'm not saying it'll work for you every time, but it's a bit of fun and it's adding another dimension to your hobby. So my dowsing rods are made out of aluminium. Aluminium wasn't available here, so I just bought them in aluminium. They're about 20 inches long and about six inches down on the bend. A lot of people put big biro pens on there or made out of wood, but I'd suggest if you're new to dowsing, keep this really, really simple. Aluminium rods, five millimeters wide, 20 inches by six inches, and you're there. So, okay, how do you start dowsing? What's the first things you need to do? Forming an association with the rods. This is metaphysical. To start dowsing, you need to form an association with the rods. Now, to form an association with the rods is asking questions. It's probably not gonna work if you're around a crowd of people, or you're in a noisy environment. Here, we're nice and quiet, we're chilled out. So, thumbs on the top of the rods, a nice grip on the hands. The first question we ask is, what way would you go for the answer yes? And as you can see, my rods are crossing. Open. What way would you go for the answer no? And as you can see, you only need a little bit of movement, but no is opening up. Well, it's less complicated than setting up the dais too. So now I've worked out an association with my rods. They're a personal thing. Always use the same rods. Don't make things complicated by putting big pens in there or using bits of wood. Just start off with something comfortable, like I said earlier. Right, the second thing we ask is, now we've got yes and no, second thing we ask is, can I douse today? And my rods are clearly going crossing. 
and you can see the wind is actually blowing them to that side but they're still working open okay I can douse today. So now we've got to be very picky on the questions we're asking. Will it allow you to find buried treasure and make yourself a millionaire? Probably not. So you've got to ask roundabout questions. For example, is there any sil buried silver in this field? There is buried silver in this field. It's a fascinating video, and I'm going to stop right there with that one uh, because it's Gary's video, and, uh, you know, you could see it, it in its entirety on his channel. But there is metaphysical elements involved to this. How were those rods moving? How does dowsing work? Well, we don't know for sure. But it seems most likely that it is actually a subconscious process. Now, a lot of people, of course, dismiss dowsing, and actually it's the very term that a lot of these critics use to dismiss it that actually I think is how it works. Critics that work from a scientific method say, well, you, you're not dowsing, that's, you're making that move. But the key to a good dowser is actually removing themselves from the awareness of rods moving and allowing the subconscious to actually take over. Now, the subconscious muscular movements are called the idiomotor effect. I believe that's how it's pronounced. I believe it's id from the psyche. Uh, motor, obviously, to do with the muscular movement uh, of the body. Okay, so that makes it a little bit more clear that you're actually turning them. Uh, he's saying that if you could go fully in subconscious mode, that's true dowsing. Um, but at least we got an answer. Yes, it is your hands that turn this that the subconscious is picking up information from the zero point field, probably from the quantum field, that is the zero point field, and then the allowing the stimuli to go through to mus tiny muscular movements in the arms and wrists and the hands to actually enable the rods to move. And of course, the other thing about that theory, if that is the way that dowsing works, is that it ties in with a lot of spiritual thinking where it says that we are one in mind because a lot of the information we can pick up using dowsing is only attainable through this sort of mind-body process. Mind-body process. I suppose that dowsing is a little bit like when Luke Skywalker turns off his computers and you hear the voice, Use the Force, Luke, in Star Wars. We live in an age of science, scientific method, testing and that's a good thing but are we leaving something out science is aware of the vicinity of where the big bang happened but has no clue how to solve on how or why it happened and that leaves us with luke skywalker and r2 who just got a headshot well sure let's state the obvious they're not real but all fiction is meant to mimic life. All right, let's go blow up the Death Star so we could move on with this treasure hunting video. And with his computers off, Luke takes the shot. It goes down the pipe. Here's the guy with the cool helmet pulling the lever. And then, and then, boom! I was a little early on that. Boom! There we go. If you're in education like me, you know the name Howard Gardner and he came up with a theory on multiple intelligences. To sum it up, genius is a word that requires specialization. In other words, if you put Albert Einstein on a basketball court, dude is no longer a genius. Now here are the categories that Gardner came up with where people can have an intelligence. Visual spatial, linguistic verbal, logical mathematical, bodily kinesthetic, musical, interpersonal, intrapersonal, naturalistic, and this is the one that I wanted to hit on, the final one, existential. There was a movie years ago called The Sixth Sense, and I swear my grandmother had it. She was a fascinating person, but uh, she was a little bit of a <laughs> predictor of things to happen. Of course, you can say that anybody can inference uh, uh, based on how well you know a situation and a person. She was exceptionally good at that. 
And this phenomena is known as extrasensory perception. And Gardner obviously thought enough of it to put it into his theory of multiple intelligences. Perhaps science focuses on the visible. So I would call National Geographic a quality source. Read this first paragraph. The visible universe, including Earth, the sun, other stars, and galaxies, is made of protons, neutrons, and electrons bundled together into atoms. Perhaps one of the most surprising discoveries of the 20th century was that this ordinary or baryonic matter makes up less than 5% of the mass of the universe. The rest of the universe appears to be made of a mysterious, invisible substance called dark matter, 25%, and a force that repels gravity known as dark energy, 70%. All right, so we went from Gardner to ESP to my grandmother to Star Wars. Let's get back on dowsing, but one last Drop the mic moment. You know, it's tough to find human examples of extrasensory perception, but it's pretty easy with animals. Bobby the Wonder Dog. Actually, type in in Google, dog traveled 3,000 miles. It's not just Bobby. But basically, animals have, or dogs in this case, have the ability to navigate long distances just with their doggy senses. Meryl? Doggy dowsing is real. I don't know about human dowsing. The next video is from Canadian Treasure Hunter, who I had the pleasure of speaking to. Hi, everybody. Canadian Treasure Hunter here. I'm doing an experiment here. I made a, a pair of dowsing rods. These are basically tuned for gold and silver. I'm not going to tell you how I got it tuned and what I did, but most of this uh, information came off the Internet. Uh, rods are brass rods, roughly 16 inches long. Handles about eight or nine inches. I'm not sure if that was the optimum length for the handles, but anyways, uh, I'm in a park here, at Vancouver, old park. It's garbage. Just used to be a garbage dump here at one time, 1920s or so, garbage dump. Anyways, uh, I was first time playing with this unit, and I got a positive hit twice, same location. I marked it up the hill here. What I'm gonna do is, I got my mind lab metal detector. I'm uh, hold, like you know I'm, when you do these units here. What you got to do is you got to hold them steady. Um, what you do is you kind of meditate, visualize what you're looking for. I'm looking for gold and silver is what I visualized. I had a couple false hits that weren't repeatable, but I got two solid hits in the same location. I marked it, walked back five six feet, and bang, same location. So this is an experiment. I'm hoping it's going to work. Um, never used a rod like this before, but I know there's people that are very successful um, down in medieval times to, you know, hundreds of years ago, people used these uh, divining rods or, you know, witch sticks or whatever they call it. They called it all sorts of different names. We're out here in a uh, Vancouver park and um as you can see, there's a Canadian treasure hunter using his um, newly made dowsing rods. Uh, one has a gold ring in it, the other one has a silver ring. And he's trying to uh, tune with them, get it, uh, be attuned uh, with where um, the signal may be, be it gold, be it silver, be it a relic. Um, it's already found uh, some finds so far. Um, nothing uh, good yet, but it's definitely honing in on signals. Uh, when the rods cross over, it's literally X marks the spot and it's often within a few inches um, of where the uh, the rods have crossed over. So um, as you can see the rods stay fairly neutral so long as uh, Canadian Treasure Hunter doesn't um, make any sudden movements but what you might notice is they'll begin to cross over once they uh, attract themselves to uh, metal. In this case, we're hoping for gold or silver. It's worth noting that uh, we're here with the local photographer who uh, was out shooting a week ago and he uh, took his glove off and unfortunately it was very cold that day. His um, gold native designed wedding ring at 34 years fell off and so we're looking for his gold ring. Hope we might find it. 
Yeah, this is about as far as the likely area straight to the boardwalk, because from here on... Try around here? I was basically just walking. Okay, so you got, cut, a, you got a signal? Here. Yeah, just cut, cut around there. Just turn off now. Getting an unusual reading to this area here. So Canadian treasure hunters sent me the design for this. And what's interesting about this is it takes hands out of the equation. Uh, that's a PVC pipe, and it is not, you know, if you turn your hands, uh, it's not going to uh, turn. Basically what it did is, I gotta, I'm losing concentration here. What it was doing is, it was, it was going like this by itself. And then all of a sudden, it was like this, locked. I did it three times. Two times, that confirmed two times. Right. But I, I'm kind of lose the train of my thought here because I'm not really I'm more focusing on the video. Hi, everybody. Canadian Treasure Hunter here. I was uh, in the Carnival lot again. Look at the uh, background there. He's using a metal detector combined with the dowsing rods. At the park. Show the area here. Okay, I used my dowsing rods first and I was thinking about finding a silver coin. So what I did is, uh, I got a good reading here, but I pulled a 60s penny here, in this location. But I also doused something in this location. I just took my glove away, I didn't get nothing. Nothing really. But I had, a, I had another iffy there, I couldn't find it. But I went here, about 10 feet away from the original points I doused, and I found a silver. Unbelievable. Don't know if it's a coincidence or... A fluke, don't really know, but definitely a silver. Got my silver, 100 silver of the year, 1956 silver dime. Uh, I just don't know what uh, I was thinking about, uh, you know, with dowsing, of finding a silver, and it took me to this location. And you know what, we hunted a lot of this area before. I'm not sure if we hunted this particular location before, but... You know, I, I, I walked all around the field in different areas. I walked around, around my car. My car is over there, somewhere. Anyways, I walked in the circles back and forth, and it was dead, no readings. And I had two hits. One hit was there, and one hit was directly here, which I hit it twice. I went down here, hit it once, went down here, my rods turned around back to this location. So anyways, uh, fluke or not, who knows, still got my silver 100 of the year. When I spoke to Phil, a uh, Canadian treasure hunter, very nice guy, very normal guy. And, uh, you know, you could see in that video, it, that was from 2012, and he was new to the process. I sensed a true belief in the process when I spoke to him last. He gave me instructions, and uh, he gave me uh, the design to his dowsing rods. I'll say this about dowsing. There's something to be said when numbers uh, agree with something. In, in other words, numbers of people. And I could see in the comment section of that last video that I featured uh, before that there are a lot of people that believe in this and there's a lot of skeptics. It is like half and half. So wrapping this up, we know that there is a metaphysical side to dowsing. And that's what alienates a lot of uh, people, uh, especially the ones who are 100% tuned into scientific method. Um, there's something also to be said about how long dowsing has been going on. If you look, there's gold dowsing videos, many gold dowsing videos on YouTube. And uh, this is something that before we had access or the technology to metal detectors, there was that spiritual connection. And I tell you, whether you think it's real or not, it is a fascinating, fascinating process and a fascinating activity. I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to reading your comments.